Hello and welcome to Just One More Watch. So you fancy yourself as a bit of a James Bond character, do you? You've been practicing your Daniel Craig pout. You even purchased a pair of those tiny blue swimming trunks in which he emerged from the sea in Casino Royale. But there's a problem. You can't quite afford the 5,000 US dollars necessary for the Omega Seamaster Planet Ocean. Don't fear, just one more watch has got your back, though perhaps not if you're wearing those blue swimming trunks at the time. Today it's the review of the Seaking SK-01, a brand new micro brand that bears more than a passing resemblance to the Omega Planet Ocean, but for 10% of the asking price. Sounds interesting. Let's flip the camera and get into it. Bond on a budget then, though I appreciate that even 10% of the cost of an Omega Seamaster Planet Ocean is by no means a drop in the ocean. This Seaking comes in at $519, which I appreciate is a fair chunk of anybody's cash. However, I think this one on specs alone more than justifies that price tag. We've got a full-sized 44 millimeter all stainless steel case, matching stainless steel bracelet. We've got a nice piece of domed sapphire crystal with plenty of AR undercoating. We've got heaps of loom, including on a ceramic bezel insert it's a limited run there's only a hundred of these produced this is number six and it contains a proper swiss made 4k high beat salita sw200 automatic movement i think you can't argue with those specs for that price well, I certainly wouldn't call it an homage, but there's a reason that I have referenced the Seamaster Planet Ocean, and I'm sure the designers of the Sea King were also referencing the Planet Ocean. Those lugs are very, very similar. The bezel, the kind of PO style bezel, all of its own, also very similar. Indices, uh, again, definite parallels, and the bracelet configuration, the unguarded crown. You know, there's no Omega style hands here, which I think would mean it was more of an homage, but you can definitely see where the Sea King gets its inspiration from. So 44 millimeters in diameter then, 22 millimeter lug width. Now it's 22, 22 all the way this bracelet, so the clasp there goes back up to 24. Now the key dimensions for me with this one though, you know, we've got a 49 millimeter lug to lug, 49 and a half, just a little bit over 49, but look at that thickness. It's only 13 millimeters thick, and that includes a piece of dome sapphire crystal. And if you notice how little of the watch actually protrudes below the mid case, this one wears very, very well indeed. One of the advantages in choosing a more expensive high beat Salita movement or the ETA 2824, rather than a Seiko NH35, is that they're smaller, they're slimmer, and you can do this with a watch. I think this one wears far more like a 42 millimeter than the 44 millimeter that the specs would suggest. Finishing on the case is perfectly decent. We've got brushing on the side, a little bit of polish on the, the kind of twisting Obega style lug chamfer, nice coin edge bezel as you can see there as well. Screw down branded crown giving this one 300 meters of water resistance and the bezel action is rock solid, 120 click unidirectional pretty much as you'd expect, no back play there whatsoever. And I'll pop up a loom shot early today. I did briefly allude to the loom ceramic bezel insert, looks fantastic. I think these are great. I really enjoy the watches I have with them. They give so much more presence at night. Those big, big indices mean you're not gonna be short of loom, that's for sure, which is a, a big plus in my book. Bracelet is a good one as well. Nice bit of definition to those end links there, and they are solid, solid links as you'd expect. We've got a, a brushed top surface and a little bit of polish on the side, and they are also proper screw links, very easy to operate. I had no difficulties adjusting this one as well. We've got a signed clasp there with the Seeking logo on it, and the little crown. As mentioned, this one's 24, so a little wider perhaps, no taper on the bracelet today, but it's a proper milled clasp. Again, pretty much what you'd expect at the price point. Also included, an, an unusual feature at this price point is a built-in diver's extension, kind of on-the-fly adjustments to this one. However, let me come back to this clasp a little bit later on. Case back today, best described as uh, fairly simple. Simple is the word. Nothing too spectacular here. We do have engraving the Sea King automatic 
a logo etched into the middle. We've got the Salita SW200, 30 atmospheres, water resistance, sapphire crystal, all stainless construction, and you can see down there 006. So the limited numbered run is printed on the case back as well, which is quite nice. Uh, as mentioned, solid end lengths of the bracelet and a decent amount of brushing on the back of the case as well, which is always good to see that consistency. So as mentioned, the movement in this one is the Salita SW200, essentially a 26 joule clone of the ETA2824. So very similar set of specifications. Out of the box, they're claiming an accuracy of minus uh, to plus 20 seconds per day. I'll pop up an accuracy report. I haven't had the seeking all that long, but this one seems to be settling in nicely somewhere in the middle of that range at about plus eight and a half there. So hacks, hand winds, nice crisp date change at or around midnight. We've got a quick set date function, 38 hour power reserve. And as you can see there, a nice smooth sweep of the second hand, given that this is a 28,800 vibrations per hour 4K high beat Swiss made movement. Zoomed right in on the dial then, as mentioned, we've got a piece of domed sapphire crystal with some AR coating on it, mixture of printed and applied. So the Seeking logo is just printed there below the 12 o'clock and we've got automatic 300 meters printed above the six o'clock, but those big indices are applied. You certainly know which way up this one is at night, given the size of the index up there at 12 o'clock. Uh, integrated date window there at three with no frame around it, white date wheel as well. Now, handset today, some pretty elongated sword hands. I quite like the hands, especially the second hand. Nice little uh, counterbalance, and we've got that little red tip pushing all the way out there to just about the edge of the minute track, which is which is always nice to see. Dial is a little plain. Perhaps they could have done something more with the Sea King logo using a bit of embossing or an applied logo. The applied crown, I think, would have looked nice in silver. Perhaps just giving a little bit of oomph to the dial, but it's a handsome looking face. Nothing you're gonna object to living with long term. And there it is sitting on top of my seven inch wrist. It's a 44, but it wears very nicely indeed. I think it wears far more like a 42 than a 44. 190 grams, uh, but wears it well, given that it's an all stainless bracelet. Look at that though, it's hugging my wrist very nicely there. Thanks to that minimal protrusion from the, from the case back. Definitely looks like Bond on a budget. It really does look quite a lot like a Planet Ocean. I think it's the bezel insert. I think it's that PO style. Arabics there, the font they use, very, very similar, but not bad at all, this one, once you get it on the wrist. Certainly feels smaller than those dimensions suggest. Moans and niggles then. Well, I've only got two, one being a niggle, one being a moan. The niggle is that it only sports a one-year warranty. Now, two years is kidding, kind of par for the course uh, with automatics, even from micro brands, so slightly disappointing that Seeking only offer a one-year warranty with this one. But my biggest problem with this watch, indeed my only real problem with this watch, is the clasp. I don't like it. I don't think it's a particularly good one. There's a little bit of play there and there are no micro adjustments. So, you know, you're kind of getting one size fits all or perhaps doesn't quite fit all due to that lack of micro adjustment. I guess there's an argument that the diver's extension becomes your micro adjustment, but again, there's a bit of flexibility there and there are a lot of sharp edges. You know, that's a, that's a sharp edge. If you're considering this one, I would ditch this clasp altogether. There are plenty of other kind of Miltac clasps available at this 24 millimeter fitting a 22 millimeter size. I just don't think this one is up to snuff. I don't think it's in keeping with the rest of the watch, which is a little bit of a disappointment. So final thoughts from me on the Seeking then. Well, Bond on a budget, perhaps more Craig Daniel than Daniel Craig, but at $519, I think you're getting an awful lot of watch for the price. Love the Loom Ceramic Bezel Insert and the sheer volume of Superluminova that they managed to pump into those hands and indices. It really does look sensational at night. Great choice of movement in the SW200 and you can't knock the value of this one, I don't think, at 520. My only major complaint was that clasp. I think they could definitely do something about that in the future if indeed they do a Sea King Mark II. However, for a debut offering, I think a lot to like about this one. So there you have it, the Sea King then bond on a budget. 10% of the cost of the Omega Seamaster Planet Ocean. That's a discount not to be sniffed at. D 
decent Swiss movement and I really enjoy the size of the case. It's a 44 but it wears exceptionally well indeed. Couple of minor niggles, mostly with that diver's extension clasp. It would do better without it to be honest, but all up, a decent watch if you can't afford the Seamaster. Thanks for watching, see you in the next video.